go back to our circle again. We know it for a circle because it's circumference of 2 pi r. That is, if I take this angle of theta and move it all the way around to, to the point where it gets over to here and the angle is 360 degrees, then there's a linear relationship between this, this circumference and the radius, and that's, and that's just a, the value by a factor of 2 pi. I'd like to define a more general relationship that if I had some other angle of theta, it's not 360 degrees. But instead, I had something that looked like a pi wedge. Like okay, I brought it there. I'd like to be able to write down some sort of again, a linear relationship between this length of this uh, outside of the wedge and the radius r. Clearly, this side, this length, gets large if r gets really big. And it gets big, it gets big, it gets really big. Well, this relationship works as long as theta is measured in what's called radians. One revolution we know to be measured in 360 degrees, but it's also equal to 2 pi radians. So this expression works as long as I measure theta in this new unit. If theta is uh, less than 2 pi, then that means I have a wedge like so. If it gets up to equal to 2 pi, then I have a one revolution and I have back to 360 degrees, and I get what I expect that the circumference is 2 pi r. So zero degrees is zero radians, but 45 degrees would equal what? Well, 45 degrees is about one-eighth of one revolution, and that's pi over four. 90 degrees would be pi over two, 180 degrees would be pi. Thirty degrees is a third of ninety degrees. So that's pi over six. Sixty degrees is two thirds of ninety. And that would be pi over three. And so on. So it's it's useful to be able to convert back and forth between this new unit of radians and the old unit of degrees.